Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for your invitation no for this uh, geological conference on, ge on geology and uh, on earth science. Uh, I am from uh, Arbamich University, uh, Arbamich Water Technology Institute. I'm a researcher there. Uh, uh, basically, uh, research is on the uh, sustainable land management activities, yeah. And uh, uh, here, Ethiopia is uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, land degradation. Uh, land degradation affects soil erosion, like sedimentations are affecting uh, Ethiopia. So uh, most of the government are conducting on uh, like uh, watershed management activities by investing huge amount of dollars. So. Here, uh, uh, we are you know, evaluating that watershed management activities on hydrological compacts like uh, on vegetation cover and uh, land use land cover and also other hydrological impacts uh, on stream flow, groundwater, and uh, uh, on uh, uh, surface water availability. So basically, these uh, topics on uh, evaluating the impacts of watershed management on vegetation cover and the land is land cover dynamics using remote sensing. And there is- I think your slides are not moving. Ah, uh, no, no, uh, I want to move, uh, it's okay, moving. Okay. Uh, here are outlines uh, for my presentation. Uh, problem statement, objectives, material, meter, result discussion, and the conclusion recommendations uh, are there. And then introduction. And the introduction, uh, uh, so uh, watershed management activities generally uh, uh, changes in land use and the vegetation covers. And basically this uh, watershed management activity has uh, uh, rehabilitated the grayly land is, uh, uh, protect basically soil and the water systems and while sustaining ecosystem services. Uh, so as a result, uh, a very uh, substantial natural resources are being investing uh, and this promoting these watershed activities. And uh, the steady area on Womba watershed, uh, there are seven micro watershed are targeted by sustainable land management intervention. And uh, the watershed is, uh, this hypothetical uh, watershed is very, uh, you know, uh, degraded and uh, low land cover, uh, uh, scare vegetation cover, low ground and uh, surface water availability, little soil moistures, and it's very degraded land. So this to address these serious problems, uh, many watershed management interventions are underway uh, in this watershed. Uh, basically, like hillside races, uh, stone bonds, deep trenches, and the energy and the community bonds. So uh, uh, this, uh, which was uh, funded by Sustainable Land Management, SLM, uh, SLM is now investing up to 0 0.2 million dollars uh, uh, on this project, but. Uh, it was uh, it was worthwhile to note there there is no proper quantification of the impact of these SLM activities on watershed activities. Uh, so, as I identified, uh, program statement, as you know, land degradation are uh, decreasing vegetation cover. It impacts uh, soil moisture and causes droughts and the flood. And it is uh, uh, quickly uh, curved or elevated by watershed management activities. Uh, despite the importance of watershed management as uh, approach of carbon this land degradation, there has been little researches um, on the impact till date, uh, mainly sufficient availability of data and also scientific knowledge, uh, uh, lack of scientific knowledge uh, uh, are major threats. Uh, so uh, basically to, to, uh, uh, to gap uh, the data availability, we use remote sensing. Remote sensing uh, uh, used to fill such data gaps. And uh, so uh, watershed management impact assessments are essential to differentiate the positive and negative impact then to replicate only positives. So several previous studies are conducted watershed management activities on uh, biophysical and socioeconomic activities. Uh, also, few studies are analyzed on hydrological impact like sediment yield groundwater, but uh, less attention was given to quantify this uh, flexes and the state variable on land use land cover and the vegetation cover. 
So objective, uh, the objective of this study was mainly to validate the impact of sustainable land management intervention on vegetation cover and land use land cover dynamics. The specific objectives are here uh, to quantify changes in the area of vegetation cover using normalized different vegetation index, uh, to validate the exact change point here, uh, to detect actual changes in land use land cover and and to evaluate uh, the accuracy of a remote sensing based on land cover mapping and vegetation cover mapping. So the study area uh, is in the uh, southern parts of Ethiopia. Uh, uh, the climatic region is mainly on uh, all is cover 76.4%. Uh, and the, the total area of, uh, out of the total area of the watershed, 62% um, uh, are coverable by cultivable land. And uh, so it's in the case agriculture is our you know, dominant activity, especially uh, maize production. And this is the watershed. Uh, this is a micro watershed, which was uh, uh, soil and water conservation activities are implemented. As you can see from this uh, figure, uh, it has an area of 49 kilometers square area. It's a micro watershed. And uh, uh, here at the outlet point, there is a river gauging which was an elevation of 1,226 and higher elevation areas. These are 2,691 meters. So uh, the, the, the river is now you know, flowing like uh, from Womba and then to go to uh, Zente River and finally to our largest river, uh, which is Omogibe Basin. So uh, this uh, research method are conducted by uh, data collection analysis, remote sensing data, uh, SRA team uh, digital elevation model and land side imageries are used and the field works are also conducted. Uh, ground control points are collected from the field uh, using GPS. Uh, uh, almost uh, 200 uh, ground control points are collected for classifying this uh, land side image in land, land covers. And uh, uh, as a method, uh, uh, the, the intervention watershed management impacts are evaluated on land cover by using these three methods, uh, land cover classification, accuracy assessment, change detection. On uh, vegetation cover, uh, the normalized different vegetation index was analyzed and land surface temperature, LST were analyzed. Uh, there, there, there is a step how to uh, retrieve uh, normalized different vegetation index from Landsat 5 and 7 image. So uh, for also from uh, Landsat 8 image only, there's also a method here, uh, how to retrieve uh, normalized different vegetation index. And also for land surface temperature, there is also a method. And uh, uh, after analyzing that, uh, here uh, uh, the, the next portion is results and discussion. Uh, so vegetation coverage was uh, analyzed using normalized different vegetation index approach for 13 years, for 30 years from 1992 uh, to 2020, from 1990 to 2020, so almost 30 years. And uh, so uh, there is no, you know, standardized rule to fix uh, the threshold value for normalized different vegetation, vegetation index. So. Uh, uh, we use the you now literatures uh, to review and uh, also land uh, uh, land is land cover image. Uh, so after uh, following that literature, the NDDVI values are calculated based on four vegetation cover classes. Uh, you know the uh, here from there is you know the map. Uh, these are the vegetation cover classes from uh, uh, bare land from low to zero point two. Uh, it indicates the bare land, you know, degraded areas. Uh, the red one are indicating on the map are degraded lands. And this, the halo are highlighted on the yellow are now agricultural lands. And these are sparse vegetation. And uh, uh, very green, uh, dense green are, you know, dense, dense uh, vegetation coverage. So, uh, you know, uh, the NADVI values are, you know, increasing from, uh, from 1990 to 2020, as can see from the figure, uh, uh, the value here is uh, 0 0.76, and here uh, in 2020, 0 0.78, which indicates there is a, an, an increasing of dense coverage, uh, dense vegetation coverage, and also the value of uh, 
this uh, uh, and uh, bear land are decreasing. You know, uh, here for 30 years, I divided like in uh, uh, for 15 years. In the, the mid years, in 50 year 2005, there's also, you know, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, watershed management activities are conducted in 1997. So it is after seven years of uh, this, uh, the initial image analysis here. Then after uh, eight years, there is a small, a little change in the vegetation coverage. You know, here in 1990, uh, there is a, a, the area of degraded land are here, you know, bare land. Uh, and also agricultural land are very high. But there is a less dense vegetation coverage and dispersed vegetations. So here at, there is a little improvement around uh, 2005 image. Then uh, basically in 2020, uh, most of the area covered by covered by uh, uh, bare land are converted to uh, dense vegetations, and also from dispersed vegetation, it was converted to. Uh, dense vegetation. So this indicates that the vegetation coverage are increasing. Uh, and from here, uh, uh, we calculated also for the area coverage, you know, for uh, bare land. Uh, the value of area here in 1990 was 0 0.26 and in 2020 it was 0 0.01. You know, it was decreasing. And uh, 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 sparse vegetation here uh, in uh, 1990 indicates 12.85 and here it is 15.94. Uh, so there is a sub uh, improvement in uh, sparse vegetation and dense vegetation also. The area coverage was here 6.87 percent here, but it's 17.4 percent. So this indicates there is abrupt change in the vegetation coverage. And also here, uh, percent uh, uh, proportion of vegetation cover classes, as can see here in 1919. There is a little uh, area covered by Berlin, what, which was dis disappeared in uh, 2020. And also the area coverage of uh, dense vegetation was here increased in uh, 2020. And also uh, the rate change, the rate change uh, uh, from 1990 to 2005. So the Berlin area are in negative, uh, which indicates the, the the area coverage was uh, decreasing you know we validated for annual rate of change in every year the value was decreasing by 3.19 percent decreasing every year and uh, for uh, as can see for dense vegetation the value are you know uh, from 1990 to 2020 the value are increasing by 5.18 percent, you know, in every year it was increasing. So this indicates that the vegetation coverage are, you know, uh, increasing after uh, watershed management activities. And also, uh, uh, we have also analyzed the land surface temperature. You know that um, uh, vegetation coverage and the land surface temperatures are inversely related because of, uh, you know, when there is a high amount of vegetation coverage there is a low uh, surface temperature, yeah? If there is high amount of vegetation coverage, so there is no uh, uh, getting uh, uh, for uh, the sun. Uh, so it, the, now the temperature is decreasing. And here, for 1990, uh, the, the temperature in degree Celsius was 39.6. The maximum temperature was 39.6. Here for 2020, the value are decreased up to 36.1% uh, uh, degree Celsius. So uh, this indicates that the temperature was, uh, you know, decreasing, uh, which indicates indirectly the vegetation coverage was uh, increasing because of in high uh, vegetated area, there is a low uh, land surface temperature or there is low also evapotranspirations. So, uh, as can see here, as the special map also indicates that uh, an area here, uh, most of the area in 1919 are, you know, categorized under uh, high temperature areas. And here, uh, some there is improvement in uh, 2005. Uh, some areas are covered, uh, which are in high high temperature area are covered by, you know, in low uh, temperature area. And here also, 
and, uh, and 2020. Uh, most of the area covered in 1919 uh, by high temperatures are converted to here the area under low temperature area. So this indicates indirect tillage vegetation coverage was increasing. And uh, also, you know, uh, it's obviously, uh, if there is high vegetation coverage, we know that there is high rainfall, you know. Uh, uh, it is obvious uh, that, but here uh, we analyze the annual uh, average uh, precipitation for uh, these three cases. Uh, in annual average temperature, uh, annual average precipitation for 1990 indicates that there is high rainfall value of 1,100 millimeter, highest rainfall. But uh, it, in 2005, the value was uh, increased in uh, up to 1,201. Then here in 2020, the value was decreased, you know, the annual average precipitation was decreased. So uh, this indicates that, you know, this verifies that the vegetation coverage increased and the area was not from rainfall increases. Uh, because of the rainfall was decreased, but the vegetation cover increased. So this indicates uh, the rainfall verifies that uh, the, in the steady area, the vegetation coverage was increased from another influence, which is uh, watershed management activities. And here also uh, we verify the citizen science. Uh, here, these are the soil and water conservation activities and on the on the slopes. Uh, here, uh, communities are you know working on there uh, on uh, different soil and water conservation activities. And here, uh, this image, there is improvement as yeah, the vegetation coverage. You know, this is the same uh, place after about five or six years. Uh, now this taken at 2020, so almost it is from 10 years later, you know, the area was covered by vegetation. So the vegetation increase indicates there is also direct groundwater coverage was increasing, or, and also there is high amount of, you know, infiltration. So uh, this is indirectly relating, you know, here also the dry stream uh, before water share management, this stream was, you know, dried and uh, not uh, flow vernial throughout the year, but later this uh, river is also, you know, started re-emerging, you know, uh, getting, so this is positive impact uh, of uh, water share management. And also the land is land coverage change. Uh, uh, before, you know, uh, uh, using the classify image for further analysis, we have to check the accuracy assessment. The accuracy assessment for the change detection method was, you know, analyzed. Uh, and here, uh, there are also uh, different methods, uh, uh, errors, uh, commission error, uh, uh, are, you know, producing error, uh, classification error, producing omission errors are, you know, uh, there to, to, you know, verify the error, uh, uh, how much the area was uh, accurately classified. So overall accuracy indicates uh, that, uh, Ninety-seven percent of the area are uh, accurately classified, and using the Kappa coefficient of zero point zero nine one, which indicates it was, you know, that the area is uh, almost uh, accurately classified because of, you know, uh, uh, the collection of ground control points from the field. You know, we, we visited overall watershed area and the collected ground control point. So by using that ground control point, we classified the that image, so the accuracy was in, uh, higher. So it is acceptable range. So we can use this image for further analysis. And so uh, after that, the three uh, different land use land cover maps are produced for 1919 and 2005 and 2020. Uh, using uh, five uh, classification, forest, forest land, grassland, bare land, agricultural land, and uh, shrub land. And also as can see here, 1990, uh, there is a uh, red part, this indicates the bare land. The bare, the bare land area is higher in this downstream part. And also there is uh, shrubland uh, virtually in the higher uh, area. But uh, there is in 2005, there is a change, you know. Uh, some part of this agricultural are, you know, changing to uh, shrublands. And the uh, forest is, you know, uh, little of forest is here in 1990 but here is an improvement in uh, forest coverage. 
which was a uh, vegetation coverage, you know. And here at uh, 2020, the change was visible. Uh, the more area was now covered in uh, uh, forest land and also the uh, shrub land are also increased here. And that, 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 you know, the main thing is here, the bare land are now decreasing. The bare land area here, it is too much. And then now it was increased, uh, decreased here. And it was disappeared almost. Uh, this indicate the bare land area are now converting to uh, vegetations or uh, agricultural, you know. Uh, agriculture is also one of uh, the positive impact from water share management. Uh, the government is, you know, uh, looking for increasing the uh, agricultural production. So after that, water share management uh, impact, uh, vegetation coverage are increasing, agricultural land are also increasing, some dense uh, 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 shrub land like grassland are also increasing. Yeah? So this is the positive impact. And here, change detection uh, using the area coverage for, uh, as can see from here, forest land, the value was increasing from 1990 to 2020 by uh, uh, 3.5%, uh, the same as like the dense vegetation coverage. And also the bare land area, as you can see from here, is uh, decreasing uh, by, you know, 9.73 percent so this indicates uh, the positive change uh, and here it's also visible from the graph uh, so here uh, the high uh, uh, bare land area are in uh, 1990 mm -hmm. in 1990 you can see here the bare land uh, there is uh, this uh, this value indicates in 1990 and uh, 2005 and uh, 2020 so uh, when we came to bare land uh, there is high amount of area are covered in 1990 the Verland here the value was decreased in uh, 2020 and also for forest land here it was value was uh, uh, 1990 was uh, little but here is the change was increased in 2020 and also agricultural land are also increased in uh, uh, in 2020 here also the change the bare land was disappeared you know uh, in here and also uh, the forest land was, you know, uh, it was yeah, show increasing, yeah. Uh, so uh, as far as that, uh, the final stage or on conclusion, so uh, it's concluded that the vegetation cover of the state area was increased uh, following sustainable land ma uh, management interventions. And the key land use land cover change observing the watershed were increased in agricultural, shrubland, grassland, and the forest land, and decrease the bare land. So this result indicates that the watershed management implemented in the state area was successfully achieved. And the finding of this research provided a scientific evidence that shows logical impacts of sustainable land management interventions on flexes and nested variables such as vegetation cover and land use land cover that has been uh, limited or not uh, documented to date. And as a recommendation, uh, here, uh, uh, most of the images uh, uh, which are profoundly affected by cloud cover affect also the result, you know. Uh, so uh, when we classify this NDV image, it affects the result. So it's recommended uh, to remove this cloud by applying uh, cloud masking algorithms. Uh, it's, uh, and also, uh, Lack of uh, sufficient ground control points leads to large error during the training of image classification and validation. So mm -hmm. it is better to collect sufficient ground control for, it for training image classification and validation. And uh, with also appropriate sampling strategy to increase the classification accuracy. So this is uh, a study. So thank you very much.